Hey, welcome back to Behind the Label. I'm Lowell, I'm with Elgary Photography. I'm Jerry from Stone Fences Tours. And this is, what is this, part four, part five? No, we're farther now, I think at least part five. Part five. We uh, may have had too much to drink. Maybe. Yeah. But we're in the Pepper story, uh, James Pepper at the point, and mm -hmm. as we uh, left off last time, it's about 1934. Mm -hmm. uh, so Prohibition has just ended. Yep. James Pepper, unfortunately, actually died in 1906 mm -hmm. from a tragic accident in Manhattan from a broken leg and we think probably a pulmonary embolism. More than likely. More than likely. With your expertise, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're at 34. So um, things actually haven't went that bad for Pepper Industries at this point because mm -hmm. they were able to actually warehouse liquor through Prohibition. They were able to use it for medicinal purposes and they're actually able to promote it. But um, the warehouse burns down. But the warehouse burns down. And the down. distillery burns down. <laughs> So they rebuilt in 1934. By this time, it's owned by Shinley. Shinley owned a lot of the distilleries. Now, I had never time. heard that name. Is Shinley a like a conglomerate? They were. They owned okay. a lot of the distilleries, especially after Prohibition. Okay. Uh, so they rebuilt it in 1934. So if you go to the Pepper Distillery today, what you're seeing is actually the 1934 recreation of the distillery. Oh, I thought, I thought uh, that was still the, the warehouse that they were in now. No, the warehouse that's there is actually from 1934. The warehouse, the yeah, distillery, so all, the, all that's from 1934. That that's 34. Okay. 1934. Okay, so, so uh, just, just right. There was actually, if you go there, uh, it's a great site to go. Uh, the parking lot actually had rick houses in it. So you got the one rick house that sits on the end. Mm -hmm. There was actually rick houses long ways in that parking lot. And, and for those of you who are joining us from uh, out of Lexington or even out of Kentucky or even out of the United States, uh, th what we're talking about is in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, there's a street called Manchester Street, which mm -hmm. is kind of historically the distillery bur uh, district, yeah. distillery bourbon district, and so uh, they have rebuilt a his, basically what we're talking about now, the James Pepper Distillery, mm -hmm. uh, built, built it back, but it goes by the name of it's the James E. Pepper Distillery. Actually, it's, it's there's it's a actually, few distilleries there now. If you go there yeah, today, say, there, there's actually there's actually two distilleries there with a third one coming. So there's going to be three distilleries on that one side. There's actually uh, two breweries. And a, a cider place. The barrel too. house is considered a separate distillery. Right? It is. It is yeah, actually yeah. the barrel house. Who we're getting ready yeah, to try. Yeah, yeah, we're, we want to pour let's that. Go, yeah, let's go ahead and try that. That was actually so, from 2008. They start. They were the first. Yeah, they were the occupant first. Yeah. In the old Pepper Distillery District. Uh, they actually. This is not the 12 year. This is the two year. So it's younger. They actually have a 12 year that they release. You know, every so often. Uh, so they were the first one to go into the old site. Uh, actually, the Pepper Distillery itself uh, closed down in 1958. Yeah. yeah so you think about that. They went, uh, the Barrel House went in in 2008. Yeah, so it was 50, 50 years. Yeah, 50 years. 50 years it sat empty. Sit there yeah, yeah, sit there empty. Just, uh, we actually, my wife and I actually got to take a tour of that. There's actually two breweries and a cider place there right now, too. And one of the owners of the brewery, Ethereal Brewing, actually took us back through the old distillery. Before, oh, before they, it was actually in the, yeah, before in they started renovating it. Uh, so it shut down in '58, and 2008, these guys from Barrel House took the actual Barrel House of the Old Pepper Distillery and started distilling. Uh, so this is product from that. This is the younger stuff. It's a little two years old. Uh, they do have a, a 12 years called Rock Castle. Uh, so it's 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 a very cool place. It's it's actually one of the places you go and you see the steel with a fire under it. You don't see that a lot of places with actual fire under it. So, so that, I mean, today, uh, in 2014, Amir Pei come in and took the largest part of the distillery and actually was able to get the name, uh, James E. Pepper, and actually start producing James E. Pepper bourbon again on that, on that side. But like I said, today it's, you know, there's going to be three distilleries there, two breweries, a cider house, battle axes. Battle axes. So you can drink and throw axes <laughs> if you want. Uh, you know, there's upscale, middle four kitchen, Goodfellas pizza, mm -hmm. crank and boom ice cream, which is our. So it's probably like the happening place of Lexington right now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool little district. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all started by. James Pepper, who James Pepper. unfortunately died in 1906, but let's let's jump back. We'll go back to 1895. Yeah, I was going to say, so we've kind of branched off after he died and then kind of what happened to his legacy. Yeah. But let's go back to where before he died, when he was at the... The reason at, we're here. The reason we're here. We're here at Silver Springs Farm. Yes. Which will soon be Silver Springs Distillery. Distillery. 
the Silver Spring Equine and Vineyard. Equine, which is a, a yeah. very cool name. It is, it is. <laughs> with the so, W. So his involvement here, actually at this site, started in 1895. Yeah, so he, he basically, per, there was an actual distillery here before that, right? There was. There was uh, actually as far back as 1867. Yeah, it, go, was, it goes quite a ways distillery back. distillery was here. Uh, four years later, the a person, uh, Younger Stone, which is an odd name, bought the distillery and moved it. Now, Nathan... Uh, uh, Nathaniel Harris. Yeah, Harris. Yeah, in the 1880s, yeah. bought this property and, and started a distillery here. Now, uh, what, what was his brand? I remember, I um, can't remember now, uh, off the top of my head, but... He was he, he apparently is the one that kind of got it really uh, modernized as far as this property mm -hmm. goes. Sounds like he had a pretty good sized facility. The he did. Were, he did. Were, I mean, it smaller. was it was. I think it was like you know in the teens on barrels per day. Yeah. Uh, so Pepper buys this site in 1895, and he does an odd thing with it. Yeah, he doesn't do anything with it. He doesn't do anything with it. <laughs> That's it, what he did with he it. He lets it sit yeah. for five but, years. But the reason he did, because again, if we're jumping back, at that time he also had other business ventures going on. He did, Which he did. primarily is, we're talking about the old pepper distillery down in Lexington yes. on Manchester Street. So mm -hmm. that was his primary goal there. Mm -hmm. So he basically wanted to have something sort of in his back pocket that he mm -hmm. could kind of pick it up. Yeah. So they had, at that time they called it the, the old pepper distillery and they called this, on where the site we're sitting on now, the Little Pepper Little distillery. Pepper Distillery, yeah. yes. Although, at, for a long time, there wasn't any distillery here. Even though there was a distillery, it just wasn't active. It wasn't active. Yeah. So he mothballed it for about five yeah. years. So about 1900, he actually, you know, opened it up as the little, you know, kind of like, he actually, it's odd the way the transition, you know, went from him purchasing it, letting it sit mothballed for five years. And then he started a company called Henry Clay Pier Rye Distilling Company. Yeah where he was president. So he sells this distillery. <laughs> to himself. <laughs> to himself as Henry Clay Pure Rye Distilling Company. But then he leases it back off himself. <laughs> and he leases it back to the James E. Pepper Distillery. Yeah. So it so, sounds like a little kind of... Yeah, so 1900, there is yeah. a distillery here on the Silver Springs farm. Uh, with the, and the, and the oddly enough, there. there was a reference, I remember reading in, in there, that um, he uh, had some association when uh, Right before the Civil War in 18, I think it's 1863, mm -hmm. the uh, Internal Revenue Service was enacted at that point, and it was basically made to bring up um, revenue for the in preparation for the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So he had some association with the people that were in, inspirational or basically uh, in the formative part of that. So he knew the ins and outs. Right. So exactly. So from what I read, he knew basically how to maneuver things around so that essentially the, the what would become the IRS, the modern day IRS, couldn't track his money mm -hmm. because he knew the people that had actually brought the bill up and had passed that act. So he knew, he knew basically the people that made the thing, so he knew how to beat the thing by knowing that. So that's probably what happened. So I, that's what I'm yeah. thinking happened. I'm not saying he's a crook, I'm just saying he's smart. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, I mean, they actually produced quite a bit of bourbon here. I mean, it was pretty oh, it was 40, huge. Yeah, 40 and 50 barrels a, a day. day. Yeah, a day, there was 40 that was and 50 barrels here. Yeah. That was produced here. Yeah, so, so could you imagine, like, literally where we're sitting right now. Um, if, the spring if is back behind yeah, us. Behind my shoulder here, the, yeah. the spring. Um, from what I read, there was a uh, 20,000 square foot facility built on top, basically on top of the spring. So that's a lot of barrels. I mean, when uh, we've run around to other, you know, smaller distillers, and they're talking like, a barrel, what is it? A barrel day or something. Maybe a, barrel a day. Two. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a barrel Yeah, a day. so they're producing 40 to 50 barrels yeah. here. And uh, there was three warehouses on the product, uh, the, you know, on on the grounds. So this this was a large operation at yeah. the time. Uh, but he did, he actually didn't start this until 1900. Right. So this was all, that was only six years before he died. Before he passed away, yeah. yes. So the same thing with it. I mean, it. It, you know, in 1906, when he passed away, it went to the investors. Uh, and sadly, this thing only lasted till prohibition. Yeah, this this, this got shut. As a matter of fact, um, from what I read, in 1917, apparently there was some kind of, in preparation for World War One, there was a lot of cutbacks on things like you couldn't buy as much corn, you couldn't buy as much basically raw material because mm -hmm. they were preparing for World War One. So that it actually kind of went down essentially uh, shut down even before Prohibition. Mm -hmm. But then when Prohibition came along, it just it just yeah. basically evaporated. Yeah. Yeah. But it's being brought back. It is being brought back. Yeah. Who's so, it being brought back by? So Alan and Leslie, who, who we, we will we talk will, to. Uh, we will talk to soon and have an interview with, and you'll get to meet the new owners of the Phoenix that is called Silver Springs Farm Distillery. Yeah. 
Join us. Open my 